Greetings to one and all. Welcome to the digi stage of learnings at the 18th edition of Mahindra Excellence in Theatre Awards. Today, our discussion is focused on the fascinating theme of fashioning the stage. Costumes, lights, sound and design. A theatre production is brought to light through various elements, such as costumes, light, sound and set design. All of which play a vital role in creating an immersive and engaging experience for the audience. The discussion focuses on how costuming, lighting, sounds and set design are at the very core of a successful play. To shed light on this topic, we are delighted to be joined by Mohit Takalkar and Gino Joseph. This conversation is moderated by Lolita Datta. Welcome to uh, both Gino and to Mohit. And it's uh, great to have you here. And it's uh, both have a very illustrious uh, career. I think we all have in our own ways uh, with a lot of experience. And uh, although my experience with sets has been uh, minimal, some film, some theatre, but a lot of space design work. And currently I'm doing some set work, actually. So um, it's it's really been nice to read your profiles and see that you both had a very interesting trajectory as far as your uh, work is concerned. So my first question actually is to Mohit. And um, I, this is, well, it's a common question, but specifically to you. Which aspect of theater design do you think is the most important in your kind of, you know, story? Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually, uh, like very honestly, uh, I think all of it. Uh, to me, I think what has happened is I started from a very realistic background uh, and my initial plays were totally very realistic, hardcore realistic and uh, then at one point, I think I realized that, you know, am I doing television instead of theater? And, uh, you, you know, this uh, this quest for making it real, like making food on stage and uh, opening the fridge and this and that. And so uh, eventually, I, I mean, I distanced myself uh, from it. And now today, especially in the last 10 years, uh, the quest has been to work with an empty stage. Uh, and uh, so if that means that, you know, there is no set element, uh, I would still mm -hmm. disagree uh, that uh, empty stage, in fact, gives you a lot and lot to work with. Uh, and maybe just a, a prop here or a color there uh, can absolutely uh, liven the performance. Uh, about music, I've been very, very particular. Uh, and... Uh, I mean, I, I absolutely essentially need music. I still haven't been able to do a play which is devoid of music. Uh, and I, I think it is very important. I mean, music really touches uh, everyone uh, and in whatever form. Uh, so like from uh, maybe I did Mehu Yusuf and uh, the entire soundscape was very, very, uh, uh, you know, from the land. Uh, and also uh, from like the environment. And today I'm doing Hunkaro, which is steeped in uh, very Manganyar songs. But yes, I, I absolutely need uh, music. And the third part, the lighting part, is again very, very important. Uh, eventually, I, like initially I came from a very Marathi typical theatre background where we have those, uh, you know, sets, the three-act structure and everything. And uh, so to move away from it uh, took me some time. Uh, but then once you are also using a bare minimum stage uh, and not many elements, then lighting becomes a key, key uh, ingredient into making that. Uh, because uh, so we, we, me and my light designer Pradeep, uh, we eventually started by uh, creating darkness and, and I mean, not showing what we don't want to show. I mean, so the the lighting was not to uh, not to illuminate something, but the lighting was done to hide other things. And so uh, the stage uh, became extremely potent with this uh, because you know it it just allowed me to create so many spaces and uh, of different shapes and sizes and different heights and uh, depths. Uh, and so yes, lighting came 
uh, very integral part of it. But I think somewhere it starts from the empty stage. So I think that would be the most sure. important thing. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you definitely that I think space, and I'm sure even Gino will agree with me on that, is uh, we start with that empty space and then we begin to visualize that space based on whatever it is. And I, I, um, I really appreciate you talking about light because I think light does play a very critical role in any kind of theatrical performance and coupled with uh, music or sound, it can completely change the way that that whole story evolves, changes, you know, dramatizes it better. So thank you for that. And uh, moving on to what I would like to ask, Gino, I was reading through your uh, profile and I found that you have a very interesting academic background as well. So has that in any way played a role in what you do? Does that impact the way you think and work or that's one part of you and the theater and story is another part of you? Ma'am, actually, I am not academically trained in theater. That's it. Um, uh, I used to watch plays from the very childhood, and I, I, I'm not an academic. I'm not an academic person in theater, but uh, but I experienced several theater activities, theater productions. I was involved in uh, several um, rural theater productions and. Uh, 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 in the beginning, I started with uh, uh, these mind, mind dramas or mind theater. And as Mohit said, um, I, I used to use this empty stage in the beginning. <laughs> but gradually, um, uh, uh, my design uh, uh, began to uh, grow into uh, bigger and bigger set designs. And nowadays, I used to um, uh, portray uh, big, uh, big technical and big, big scenic or set design elements I, I use uh, use nowadays. And uh, as Moise said, uh, now I started thinking of a blank, empty stage uh, only with the performance of the artist. And I have to go back to that stage nowadays. I have um, experimented with the uh, with uh, several type of uh, uh, set movements, set um, uh, bigger or uh, experimental sets and all. And nowadays I am trying to go back to that empty space, uh, giving all the freedom to the artists. Only. Okay. Definitely so, I will go for music and uh, this lighting, and lighting yeah. is very yeah. important. So I think both of you are kind of talking about a very minimalistic approach to uh, set design. Is that if I understand correctly? And, no, and do you think I, it's working for the audiences now? So no, I think Gino wants I'm, to add something. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm not um, doing a minimal or practicing a minimal uh, stage design or set design nowadays. I'm actually, I'm I am practicing a bigger, bigger uh, style of set design, a stage full of set, the revolving stage. Uh, ah, so uh, the scale is different. Uh, both, uh, both Mohit and me are uh, on the uh, uh, different opposite extremes. Yeah. He <laughs> uses, actually, he uses very minimal set. He opts for the blank stage. At the same time, uh, now, now. Uh, I am I'm doing or I am practicing my theater with the uh, set and uh, technical tools. That's it. Okay. Mohit, would you like to add to that or should we carry on with no, the next? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I think you should carry on. Let's, okay. let's tackle okay. it. Yeah. So I, we all know that and I'm sure we both know that we all, we all know that. Um, that store the storyline and the space always has to connect in a way. So I'd like to ask each one of you, what is your process of visualizing that? Could you elaborate it further? A little, um, little bit? You you have the play, so you have the storyline. 
And then you have to uh, imagine how that storyline is going to translate into the three-dimensional using whatever you have. So what is your process by which you bring that alive onto the stage? Mm, yeah. So uh, again, I'll go a little back, but uh, you know, earlier I had, uh, I won't say no, but I would have uh, a little regard for the actor and which has drastically changed over the years. And now actor has uh, just taken this very prominent space. Uh, and the other thing was that uh, earlier I was, I used to be very thorough with my homework and before going to the rehearsals, I would have everything charted and every movement marked and, you know, also whatever notes I had about color, shape, sizes, everything. And uh, maybe it has changed for the last five years, five to seven years, uh, where I am allowing myself this luxury uh, to walk into the rehearsal room without knowing much. Uh, and then when we get on the floor where we, where I have, uh, considered the actor now to be an important collaborator with me. Uh, so I first try to figure out what I do with the actor's bodies. And once I arrive at something, then I start using other elements. Uh, and initially my, uh, my entire effort is that the actor shouldn't be disturbed while I try bringing different elements. And uh, maybe to see uh, how how the actors respond to it, how how is it going to uh, you know aid in making a particular moment alive? And once I have uh, a sense of that, uh, then the actual elements start coming in. Uh, and uh, so I what I usually try is I do bring in a lot of elements, and then one by one I try eliminating if it's really not required. And then maybe just keep with uh, a, a, a minimum uh, intervention on that part. Uh, so somehow, I think that would be the journey for me. So, so it's almost evolving as you go along. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. That's, that's interesting because I think that's a, a interesting way of doing it because you will probably see so many uh, nuances which are different or they come along as you... Play, play along with whatever you're doing. Uh, Gino, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I also what use... What is your process? So what is your yeah. uh, way of bringing theatre alive? Yeah, Mine, my, my process is uh, that just like uh, Mohit said, um, I have, uh, I will make a plan already. Uh, I, I will write the script, but when the process of playmaking starts, I keep aside my script and uh, my plans and I start uh, working with the actors, uh, some exercises, some games, uh, some cooking and all uh, some interesting sessions will be done for several days and uh, these um, um, actors or te uh, technicians and the entire uh, crew will be uh, uh, what we call brought to a family atmosphere then we will start uh, 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 gradually we will uh, go to the production uh, uh, without the knowledge without know, they, they don't know they are uh, the actors don't, actually don't know they are going to work, towards or going into the play and um, uh, unconsciously horror what we call they, they will they will reach at, at the end of the play and uh, it is a process it is actually a process it, it's an improvisational process and i can apply characters uh, um, to these actors and the character uh, the characters are not uh, already planned i can make characters i can make situations i can make designs from these exercises and um, I, actually i uh, Almost all the plays of mine are uh, uh, improvisational, and uh, we will experiment uh, something. Uh, some uh, we, uh, some sometimes we will experiment something with the set design uh, and the total design of the play, and um, it happens. The play happens. <coughs> Sorry, the play happens at the end of it. That's it. 
That's that's very interesting because if you're improvising as you go along, then I suppose a lot of improvisation is required. So how do the audiences react to this? Do you think they know it's improvised or it's just a natural process? It is not. Uh, it's not for the sake of improvising. It is a, actually there is a script and there is a concept and chanting very strongly on that that script and that concept. I will move forward <coughs> with this improvisation. Um, uh, sometimes these actors may feel like uh, they they have created this dialogue and they. Uh, they are the one who created this situation or this emotion or they have they will they will have a feel uh, that uh, they have made this play the total crew members will uh, feel that they they together made this play but it happens uh, and also this same thing will make a very good impact on the audience uh, as far as my experience is concerned and um, <clears throat> Uh, if we, um, for example, if if we uh, uh, make uh, the same production or recreate this same production with another group, uh, it will be very difficult to uh, uh, difficult for the other group of people to <coughs> enact or uh, to become the characters. That is not a, an easy process because these characters are formed. These characters are born from these people, and they are the genuine um, uh, guys to perform this one. And sometimes uh, we have to make another change, some another changes to uh, the play when this same play is performed by another group. That's it. <laughs> yeah, fine. Okay, so. The next is a very sort of obvious uh, scenario. You know, we are all moving into this uh, very digital age and there's a lot of impact of technology. So, um, Mohit, how do you think, um, what are the major interventions that technology has done and how has it changed? Has it changed your thought process in this whole story? It definitely, most definitely has. And uh, I mean... I mean, we are at this stage where we cannot shy away from it. And uh, we should actually make it our friend, make it an ally and work with it. Uh, the thing is what I think we are, uh, I mean, as the general theater of India, I'm saying that we are thinking of theater as a very pure art form uh, where, you know, uh, that, oh, no, 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 no technology. And we were always doing this kind of stuff. And... 5,000 years and this whole tradition. I, I have no, uh, I mean, I have utmost respect towards it. But I think technology is something that has been entering our lives, whether we like it or not. And uh, it has, it, we, we need to make it an integral part of our exploration. Uh, so for me, I think, you know, theater is always, uh, I mean, it's a bastard art form where, you know, you have, uh, music and art and uh, obviously dance and you know films everything being a part of it it's not a pure art form like a say classical indian music or you know classical indian dance uh, and so in fact if technology is trying to come in uh, we should absolutely welcome it and uh, it would only make our work uh, you know uh, more immediate and uh, also uh, more relevant. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, the theater scenario could be like, you know, this archaic thing where, uh, you know, it, it's a very uh, serious uh, kind of evening. Uh, but unless we make it, uh, our theater is, if, it, if we make it a part of what the audience's lives are, uh, I think we'll be thrown away more and more. Uh, and so, yes, I say technology is a boon. And we should definitely, most definitely use it. Is there any particular kind of technology that you've used in recent times, which has made your, you know, sort of experience difference or the audience experience different? Any specific thing, whether it's music or sound? Or no, like, I think, yeah, I think every, or it's every, all everything. Uh, yeah, everything, everything. Uh, because now I don't 
I mean, I don't sit back after the rehearsal and think that how should we welcome technology? I mean, it just becomes a part of it. Uh, and obviously projections and mapping mm. and yeah. uh, 3D, this thing and sound, the, the entire live sound, you can play with it, absolutely. Uh, uh, different types of lights. and So all this is, I think, not only me. I think most uh, theater makers across the, across the country in uh, especially cities are definitely using it to its, uh, I mean, the best of their ability. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you know how, how, for you, how has technology affected your uh, way of looking at theater? Is there something you... Yeah. I agree to Mohit uh, to the full because uh, um, technology is uh, invented. All the technologies or all the technological inventions are made by human and um, uh, it is for the uh, for uh, for uh, to be used by the people or uh, to be used by the human and uh, definitely you have to use my my, my part is that my my opinion is that you have to use uh, as much technological aspects you can as possible uh, i think uh, because uh, um, uh, nowadays the world is uh, in a uh, in a stage of tremendous change, and we have to address the uh, new uh, upcoming generation, yes. and we have to update. Uh, always, we, we have to be updated, because um, if we go for the traditional way of uh, or conventional way of uh, theater, uh, people won't. Uh, uh, they will not be attracted towards theater. You have to first of all, you have to keep. Keep these people who are interested in theater, uh, you have to keep, uh, keep these persons uh, here in theater. Otherwise, um, uh, uh, we will lose this, uh, what we call our audience and our theater. We will, uh, it will co come to an end. Because um, you, have to, uh, you, you have to address uh, a generation um, who has spectacular uh, visuals in their fingertips. And uh, uh, you have to give uh, such spectacular uh, or um, such uh, uh, visu uh, audio visual treat, hmm. to, uh, first of all, to attract them. Then you can start speaking your politics. Then you, you can start your intellectual things. First of all, you have to uh, attract or uh, attract the attention of these generation yeah. I think. Yeah. So, so do you think uh, audiences have changed in the past 10-15 years? Mohan, what, what do you think? Do you think the audiences have changed? Uh, in respect to what, may I ask? In respect to how, um, you know, everything is accepted on stage, subject content matter? Do you think content matter has uh, evolved or has been looked mm -hmm. at differently like film has, you know? Film yeah. is doing so much, especially on the OTT platform. They're yeah. exploring subjects of different kinds. How do you think theater is doing that? I I mean, I'm sorry, but I I mean, there is uh, much work to be done there. Uh, I really, I, do, I don't see audiences uh, uh, well. I mean, I mean, <laughs> how do I put it? But uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, like, yeah, like, it is difficult. Is, like film is exploring uh, gender issues and yes. same yes. sex relationships. And, you know, there, there's so much happening other than all the crime and yes. all that kind of stuff. Which yes. That yes. Part. But uh -huh. um, socially relevant things that is happening, a lot of it is happening in film. Yeah. Do you think the same is happening in theater? I, I, I have my uh, reservations and doubts about it. Uh, because I think that... You Why know, do you I, say I, that? I, Why do you think it's <laughs> not happening? Uh, I mean, I don't know who the audience is just now. I have, I, I don't know the shape and size of the audiences that audience. we're dealing with right now. And uh, is it, is it, are, uh, is it it's just comprising of people who have been watching theater for mm. the past 20 years? Uh, or is it someone new, I mean, you know, new people coming to watch theater. And I don't see new people coming to watch theater so much. 
I agree and, with you on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if if there are people who have been watching theater for like a great evening or even like you know uh, I mean with I mean good in the heart like but uh, and the respect towards theater uh, hmm. I think somewhere those people are kind of you know they are they are stuck there uh, yeah. because what has happened is that uh, strangely all these things are coming into everybody's theater around but uh, the audiences have a certain um, you know definitions that you know this is theater and this is not this is a performance this is a circus this is a a, a dance rendition uh, so you know they're trying to keep all these separate uh, okay. so unless we do that uh, I, i don't see that you know we are progressing in the exact right direction uh, i can see you know even at some places where we perform we see that uh, the theater audience comprises of theater makers only i am not sure that how much of a general audience walks into a theater and watches something unless it's like usually popular unless it's it is stars uh, you know no names or you know that kind of stuff so uh, i think the audience is also need to gear up and I mean, pull their yeah. socks yeah, yeah they they have to but again i would say that the audience will only and only evolve if we keep throwing new challenges at them if we keep surprising them if we make them uncomfortable to the core only then will they respond and i think so then that onus is on us theater makers that you know okay let's 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 go ahead let's not think so much about you know the validity of it uh, this is a theater space and let's explore it uh, at the most you fail i mean in theater that's the thing like at the most you fail whereas in films what happens is that if you fail then it it, it is going to cost you in crores but in yes. theater i mean you know it, it is going to cost you maybe 6 months of rehearsal but that those 6 months of rehearsal in itself has been so rewarding and enriching that suppose we fail with a play that's absolutely all right we just need to go ahead that right. that's my way of looking at it that's a very good way of looking at it but i agree with you that uh, you we have to be the agents of change you know and only if we begin to do that i think things will change i think so you know do you have you done experimental theater have you worked with the say younger audiences what is your take on this i think um, uh from my experience uh, we have to uh, there is a question that uh, people may ask for uh, what is the purpose behind uh, watching this play uh, what is the purpose for me to watch this this, this play or so, uh, uh, yeah. that play uh, we, uh, they will ask for, uh, first and foremost and we have to address that question and uh, we have to drive this uh, these people towards it otherwise we can't survive that that's a question that we have to answer first of all and uh, nowadays also in my place i am facing a big, bigger problem that a big problem that uh, actually i am i am using all these type of technic uh, technical aspects on hmm. the set design or the spectacular views and the light design everything um, uh, when when i stage uh, my plays in kerala uh, some people uh, and uh, I, i have heard that uh, they are asking why all these elements why, why he is using all these elements is it necessary or not uh, actually they are opting for the, this traditional or or this ah. uh, typical way of uh, theater yeah. the classical um, kind of thing yeah classic uh, classical or or the um, cliche theater pattern um, uh, we are we have been using for years and when i go to other places uh, hmm. for example at least in uh, we, uh, our performances in meta or uh, um, uh, brm or or in hmm. other places i have uh, uh, showcased my plays in several other um, countries also uh, mm. when i when i go there uh, when when i present my plays there they are excited they are actually uh, appreciating the effort 
and appreciating the effort uh, to uh, to make it more more attractive more more challenging more experimental they are welcoming the exper uh, experiment that experiment uh, and um, i think uh, uh, i will go on with uh, with this kind of experiments this uh, kind of updations and so because the, we cannot uh, keep theater in such a frame it has um, mm. so such and such definitions we, ca we can't conclude theater in such uh, such a definition it's beyond definitions it's beyond uh, these these uh, so called frames and all we are there are several options there are several choices several um, uh, what we call several opportunities several you know, chances and we are we can make in each and every uh, every space there is theater there is drama in each and every subject there is drama in each and every every context there is drama you can you can i, I think you can you use projectors you can uh, use led walls you can use uh, vehicles you can use helicopters you can use anything in theater i think if it is demanded or if it is necessary that is the point yeah you can use everything if the script or the subject demands it. i i think it uh, you can use all the elements like lighting music uh, or wh whatever you want if the first and foremost thing is the script or subject uh, and uh, the actors you can use all the elements uh, which support the act actors and um, uh, 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 which may create more uh, or uh, which will support more to the play or which will contribute more uh, to the emotions of the play to the meaning of the play you can use i think uh, when i you when i keep um, uh, myself away from all these things uh, people also ask why are you no, not uh, why are you going for uh, such a compromise <laughs> and finally I, i i came to the conclusion that these all are not genuine uh, genuine things people uh, people all these conversations are not genuine they are uh, simply telling all these things but one thing that at i am all, i am also working with the school children uh, children theater okay. i am um, working with the campus theater uh, i am working with the rural people uh, and mm. i am pe working with people uh, live across uh, abroad, uh, abroad and all <clears throat> and um, i know um, um, people people uh, opt more more this this type of um, experimental or um, uh, this type of updated theater forms okay so the, there's a very um, sort of a, this new thing that's going around everywhere which says the immersive experience i mean we are talking about this immersive experience for a lot of things have you um, felt or have you been a part of such an uh, experience mohit in india mm -hmm. has it taken off or are we still no not no 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 not i really. haven't been a part yeah. but but i am really looking forward to you know engage with yeah. it uh, yeah. yeah yeah and there are some like good uh, i mean really worthwhile uh, experiments that have been happening in india as okay. well and um, uh, it's also like you know i mean it's not really so new honestly speaking i mean it has been like been yeah. happening for the past 10 12 years but um, yeah. but yeah again i think we are still you know we are on the baby steps for it uh, but yeah uh, i'm very much looking forward to uh, being doing something uh, like being for example i don't know if this uh, could uh, in any way amount to a in immersive experience but Uh, maybe i did a play uh, called the elephant's journey by jose saramago's novel and where we what i had tried doing was that you know uh, the audience was sitting in the center uh, in the theater in a black box on swivel chairs and mm. the entire uh, play was happening around them in 360 degrees mm -hmm. so there were also points where you know you have this option of you know watching this particular uh, incident here or a scene just happening bang opposite uh, but you know it 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 was a story about a journey and so this entire scheme evolved very naturally 
because you know I wanted them to be a part of that journey. Uh, in a couple of uh, plays, I have tried to play with uh, smell, especially. Uh, yeah. So, but then I'm seeing that you know I'm trying things. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking looking at uh, some text or some uh, idea to be worked upon. Okay, that's that's. It. Do you want to add something to that, uh, Gino? Have you felt or have you been a part of this whole uh, immersive experience? Or would you like to be a part of it? Yeah, uh, my uh, as Mohit said, I have also used this uh, um, smell for a communication element uh, okay. uh, as in my play Mati uh, that was uh, presented in Meta uh, in 2014, I think. And um, it was a very good experience. I used uh, to uh, use this um, uh, smell of uh, frying sardines. That okay, means, uh, okay, that fish, okay. Uh, uh, lively, we are frying that sardines and this. Uh, I think uh, all these elements, uh, as we say, said, all, all the set, prop, uh, light, um, sound design, uh, costume, um, uh, there are several other elements like this smell mm. or mm. this touch and all we have to part uh, we have to participate or uh, as much people uh, in uh, in as much way, ways as possible i think that was a good experience for me while using this smell or olfactory communication process it was very interesting for me Okay, so the last question, which is very short, uh, if you were to recount your, um, your let's say, favorite or your most loved uh, play that you worked on, each one of you, which one would that be? Uh, I don't we have worked upon, right? Yeah. Uh, was it? Uh, the question, Lolita? Like, uh, the question a play that is that I want you to recount that one play or that one experience you've had in your career so far that has been very meaningful to you okay uh, for me i i was studying in uh, the university of exeter i'd gone there for a the year to do my masters and i came back and uh, you know whatever plays were happening uh, my plays which were running we just closed them that you know that's it and i it was uh, you know i couldn't look at them any longer uh, because uh, I mean, yeah, I was really, really uh, ashamed of it then at that point. But then, what I had, what happened was that I waited for a year uh, because I didn't want, you know, whatever I had learned or like watched or seen, I just didn't want it to come directly into my practice. So I was trying to wait for it, and then I did this play called Comrade Kumbhakaran, written by Ramu Ramnathan. I did it with the uh, National School of Drama Repertory Company, and. I think, you know, that that was uh, like a very defining moment in how I saw okay. theater. And, uh, uh, you know, with, with NSD, you have this huge infrastructure behind you and everything. Uh, but the way the, the script evolved, the way uh, the play, uh, you know, it was so organic. And for the first time, maybe I was working with completely trained actors. And mm. I just realized how much a difference it can make. Thanks. And, um, you know, so, and so also it was like a hardcore political theater and, uh, you know, my audiences changed. The language was different. I hadn't worked in mm. such pure chast Hindi as well. Hindi. And so, mm -hmm. yes, that, that was a, a very important play for me. Thank you. And what about you, Gino? Is there one something that you'd like to recount and tell us your best experience uh, or your favorite or something that you really enjoyed? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, as I said, uh, my play Mati, that means sardines in English. Okay. Uh, that small fish. <laughs> and uh, that is uh, my, uh, what do you call it, my favorite play, I can say. Um, uh, it is a very genuine play, I think. Uh, uh, all the actors, technicians, uh, uh, and all were very... Common people. Uh, it was a very good example for uh, this rural theatre practice, and the people oh, from different parts of life were engaged in it. And uh, and the play was very simple, uh, very simple 
in the sense uh, in the design in the language uh, script uh, conversations everything it was very simple and um, several elements like uh, as i said earlier this um, <clears throat> smell it was, actually it was an intimate uh, intimate play the common people okay. can uh, feel it very um, uh, especially the kerala people uh, can uh, enjoy the play um, very much uh, and also when i when i uh, presented this play twice in delhi uh, those <laughs> delhi audience actually they were enjoying apart from this colloquial language and all they were actually enjoying they were laughing and um, uh, some uh, some people asked uh, to that audience also are you kerala people are you uh, do you know malayalam and how are you enjoying how are you uh, um, what do you call uh, how, how you uh, just laughing uh, for the humor in this play there is humor there is life there is okay. politics there is intellectual things there is uh, simple things there is uh, what we call uh, set light uh, costume everything uh, there in this play that is um, actually that is, that play was a break for me and uh, i have uh, uh, presented the play in several places that was a very good experience for me okay thank you so much and um, i think we have to end the session and i'm i'm sure we can carry on talking about the various experiences of theater because it is a very sensory experience because it involves you being completely you know it's a visual thing it's a it's a feeling you you can sort of experience various emotions and um, it gives us lots of opportunities to do so many things that we all love to do so it was really lovely having you with us both of you with us today this evening and um, i'd like to wish you all the very best and hope to see some of your uh, theater soon so wishing you for a great uh, rest of the year ahead and thank you for being with us today thank you so much